Welcome to Our Lady of Peace Church and Shrine. Today, we celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Please check to make sure that your cell phones have been turned off or silenced before we begin today's celebration. For any visitors here today, our side hall is available for additional seating. A few friendly reminders. To everyone attending Mass in the side hall, please kneel or stand during the consecration of the Eucharist. <laughs> Unless for physical or medical reasons, please remain seated. To receive communion, you must be in a state of grace. Mass is concluded only after the priest gives the final blessing. Our celebrant for the sacrifice of the Holy Mass is Father Brian Dinkel. In the red, Autoramus hymnal number 513, O Lord Jesus, I adore thee. 513, in the red, Autoramus hymnal. <laughs>
offer this holy mass for the sanctification and perseverance of priests, particularly the priests of this diocese of San Jose, and the priests of the Institute of the Incarnate Word, priests that are working here at Our Lady of Peace. Um, remember priests on this day. It's a day um, in which Christ instituted the s ministerial priesthood on the Last Supper as we gather here um, with great gratitude for this tremendous gift, the gift of the, the Eucharist and the gift of the Most Holy Priesthood. We also, in this Mass, will be receiving the oils that were blessed at the Chrism, that were consecrated at the Chrism Mass uh, by our Bishop, Bishop Oscar Cantu, uh, last Thursday, which are the oils that will be used for our catechumens um, to be anointed uh, after, before and after their baptism. And it will be the, the use of the oils of the sick that we use throughout the year to anoint those who are sick, uh, that they may be restored to health or those who are prepared and being prepared for death, for the passing. So it's a great opportunity to gather and give thanks to God for these many gifts, in particular the sacraments that we share. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. <coughs> Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault through my most grievous fault therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin all the angels and saints and you, my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Holy Spirit. 
us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight it is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
has done for me. The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. de la primera carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Corintios. Hermanos, yo recibí del Señor lo mismo que les he transmitido, que el Señor Jesús, la noche en que iba a ser entregado, tomó pan en sus manos y pronunciando la acción de gracias, lo partió y dijo, esto es mi cuerpo que se entrega por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria mía. Lo mismo hizo con el cáliz después de cenar, diciendo, Este cáliz es la nueva alianza que se sella con mi sangre. Hagan esto en memoria mía siempre que beban de él. Por eso, cada vez que ustedes comen de este pan, y beben de este cáliz, proclaman la muerte del Señor hasta que vuelva. Palabra de Dios. God. 
gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. He rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that, as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So on this most holy night, Holy Thursday, we commemorate once again the institution of the priesthood and the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. The readings today are highly appropriate, so they focus on the Passover, and we know the story of the Passover event where Moses was asked to put the blood of the sacrificial lamb on the doorposts and the lintels so that the destroyer angel would pass over. And this blood points to the blood of Christ. So St. Paul speaks about that in the second reading today. He says, as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. So the cup of salvation, as we hear in the psalm, contains the precious blood of Christ. You know, in the litany of the precious blood that was promulgated by St. Pope John XXIII, one of the invocations says, Blood of Christ falling upon the earth in agony. Have mercy on us. So Jesus' greatest suffering was his agony in the garden. And it was a mental and spiritual suffering. So this preceded his physical suffering. And that's why in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, My soul is sorrowful even unto death. St. John Henry Newman has a very profound 
reflection on the agony in the garden, I used some of it in my shroud uh, talk this uh, past uh, week. And he says, the agony, a pain of the soul, not of the body, was the first act of his tremendous sacrifice. He continues, there he knelt, motionless and still, while the vile and horrible fiend clad his spirit in a robe steeped in all that is hateful and heinous in human crime, which clung close round his heart and filled his conscience and found its way into every sense and pour of his mind and spread over him a moral leprosy till he almost felt himself to be that which he never could be. So Jesus is the eternal high priest. He is sinless. And his agony was for all sinners, for all of us here, but especially for priests, especially for all Judas-type priests and Judas-type Catholics out there who are betraying our Lord through mortal sin. So we are also currently in a Eucharistic revival. I would say that in order to have a genuine Eucharistic revival, we need to have a confession revival first. Thanks be to God that is a good problem here. We always have confessions here. We must always receive our Lord and Holy Communion in a state of grace. If you don't understand what those words mean, then it behooves you as Catholics to understand that. Go to the catechism, ask a priest. But you have to know your faith. You have to know when you're in a state of grace, when you're not in a state of grace, when you're in a state of mortal sin. You have to know when you can and cannot receive Holy Communion. Because of Jesus' agony, he sweat blood. Going back to this shroud talk that I was mentioning earlier, I talked about this shroud. This is a cloth that is about 14 feet long that is actually housed in Turin. When I was first ordained a priest, I was uh, sent to Italy for a year, and I actually got to see the shroud when it was on a public exhibition in 2015. It was a very powerful event. And the blood type on the shroud is the same blood type that is found in all of these Eucharistic miracles. And it is very common that the type of flesh that is found in these Eucharistic miracles is it's a myocardium tissue. It's, it's of the heart. And if you take the Eucharistic miracle, for example, in Buenos Aires, it's a heart that was in extreme agony. It was, it was suffering because of the proliferation of white blood cells that they found in this tissue. And so I quoted an author in my talk. He's a cardiologist from Italy who wrote a book on the Eucharistic miracles, and he compares it to the shroud. And he says, the wounded body of the Eucharist is also one that is gloriously sitting at the right hand of the Father, even if simultaneously suffering the torment of a heinous death on Golgotha. It is a living and suffering heart which will be in agony till the end of the world. So the point being is that the eternal high priest did not suffer back then and that's it. He continues to suffer in his priests even today. And the suffering began in a garden, Eden, where man and woman, our first parents, failed God. But God in his mercy would send a new Adam, a new Eve, in a different garden, the Garden of Gethsemane, which actually means oil press. And there, the new Adam, Christ, would sweat blood. He would suffer in atonement for what Adam did not suffer suffer enough, rather, to resist that sin. And so Jesus took upon himself all of our sufferings, all of our sins, the sins and sufferings of the entire human race from the dawn of time till the end of his, uh, till the, uh, his second coming, rather. There's a condition that those who uh, study medicine, who are doctors, etc., who study the shroud, 
They talk about this condition that Jesus likely experienced. It's called hematidrosis. This is the sweating of blood. And this is a rare condition that occurs only when a person is in extreme, extreme, extreme duress and agony due to fear of death. And so this is what uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus experienced. And what it actually did, which I mentioned in the talk, is that these, what they call subcutaneous capillaries would become distended, they would burst, so the blood would come out, making the skin very sensitive, even to like blowing on it such that any sort of touch, even wind, would register in the body as physical pain. So Jesus allowed this in himself, to, for him to suffer this, before he was even scourged. And what's interesting is that some say that the first person to inflict a touch of pain upon him after this sweating of blood was Judas. He kissed him, and that registered as pain. So nevertheless, with infallible foresight, Christ knew what was going to happen, and he still went all the way. He still went on to institute the priesthood and the Eucharist, so we have to marvel at his humility. And he showed his apostles what true humility looks like. He washed their feet. You didn't do that in the ancient world because the feet was considered a body part that was very dirty from the very fact that it steps on the ground, there's dust. And so the fact that our Lord was washing their feet scandalized the apostles. In fact, I showed a painting my talk yesterday by an American painter, Ford Maddox Brown, it's a very powerful image and it shows Christ washing the feet of Peter and Christ's head is tilted down in a very um, interesting position. It's almost a 90 degree type angle and you see his humility there and you see the apostles in the background, they look so shocked at what he's doing. Pope Benedict, in his book, Jesus of Nazareth, he actually says that Jesus washing the feet of the apostles is symbolic of the real spiritual washing that he wants to effect in our souls every single time we receive Holy Communion. He says Jesus is continually on his knees at our feet and carries out the service of purification, making us capable of God. So we have to give thanks to God for the priesthood. Despite all of the attacks upon it, there will always be a priesthood. And Christ is the true model of all priests. Every priest is called to be another Christ. He is another Christ, an altar Christus. And the eternal high priest's meek and humble heart, which is also a suffering heart, remains with us in every tabernacle. So a priest came, a, a priest is another Christ, and Christ came into the world to save souls. You know, for us priests here, that's why we became priests. We all had different story, we all have different stories, but essentially it's all the same in the sense that we all were moved by the eternal high priest at one point in our life such that we wanted to give our lives totally to him to save souls. And when we think of a priest, we have to think of his mother, because when we think of the eternal high priest, we have to think of the blessed mother. Priest and mother go together. Priest and blessed mother go together. You know, there's a tradition, a pious tradition, that states that when a priest's uh, mother arrives, hopefully at the pearly gates in front of St. Peter, when she arrives there, she's escorted to the Lord, and then the Lord will say um, to the woman, I have given you life, what have you given me? And then she hands him the, what they call the magiturgium, which is a cloth that was used to wipe the priest's hand after his consecration. So my mother has it, not too far from here. We give that to our mothers after our ordination, and we keep it in a a prominent place and so then the mother will respond I have given you my son as a priest 
At this, Jesus grants her entry into paradise. So every vocation, says Pope Pius X, a vocation to the priesthood comes from the heart of God, but it goes through the heart of a mother. So that's why we need to pray for all priests, but that's why we also have to encourage uh, mothers to also uh, encourage their sons to possibly think about a vocation to the priesthood if God is truly calling them. And why do we have to do that? Because every vocation to the priesthood is a tremendous gift from God. And why do you think the devil attacks it so much? And so every priest is called to be a bridge to eternity. So when people come to him, they should be able to see eternity. Right? And that's a, that's a big responsibility for us priests, and that's why we need your prayers. But nevertheless, life and death passes through our hands. Right? And so that's why we need to strive to pray for holy priests. Because we give you the sacraments, and the sacraments are the source, the conduit of eternal life. I want to end with a story and also to ask for your prayers. You, you know, a few years ago, you heard of this story. Uh, I, there was a car accident, if you remember that, after Holy Thursday. And I had to jump the fence. And there was a drunk driver that hit a family right after the Mass. And the firefighter said that they had come from your church, Father. And so they sadly were dead. And so I, I talked to the family recently. And I told them I would be mentioning them and also praying for there are two family members, the mother and daughter, who died, and so they were happy to uh, have my uh, blessing to talk about it. And so I actually um, received a text from some of their family members recently because another brother of theirs died uh, just a few weeks ago on Leitari Sunday. And I thought to myself, you know, as tragic as these losses are, this family seems to be very intimately united to the Lenten mystery of the death of Christ. So it's, I see it as a blessing from God that he wants them to be with him so he's taking all of their family members, we can say. Of course, we have to pray for all of the deceased. For a devout Catholic, death should be welcomed. It shouldn't be something to fear, right? So if we fear it, as Fulton Sheen says, it's because we're not ready for death. And so we have to be ready for death. Fulton Sheen says the Eucharist is not only an incorporation in the life of Christ, it is also an incorporation into his death. The Mass is a mystical representation of the death of Christ through the separate separate consecration of the bread and wine. So for the two who died that night, their death after Holy Thursday, when we look at it from human eyes, it, it's scary, it's shocking. But if we look at it, that with supernatural eyes, then the death becomes meaningful to say the least. So preparation for death, a holy death, begins by receiving Holy Communion worthily as much as we can uh, daily if possible. A preparation for eternal death is by receiving sacrilegious communions knowingly and habitually. There's a saint, Saint Margaret of Cortona. She is a mystic. I think she's also incorrupt. She's buried in Bologna and she's considered a second Mary Magdalene and she was once speaking to our Lord, and our Lord told her, My child, to most men I am dead, as far as they can make me so. I live by grace in very few. They offend me so greatly that if I forget that I, the true God, came, they forget that I, the true God, came to suffer for them. I would hiss them away from my presence when they come to communicate with me. He's talking about a sacrilegious communion. 
Woe to souls who do not stop offending me and yet presume to receive my body. It will go hard for them at judgment. So we have to prepare well for death, and that means by really, really reverencing the Eucharist, really living out this Eucharistic revival according to the Catholic faith. How we die doesn't really matter. What really matters is that we die in a state of grace. I end with the words of uh, Fulton Sheen. A happy death is a masterpiece, and no masterpiece was ever perfected in a day. Death is a beautiful thing for him who dies before he dies. By dying daily to the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil. So the Eucharist is our hope. So the Eucharist is the glorified body of our Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity. So may we never lose sight of this all the days of our life. Uh, may we always reverence the Eucharist and love our Eucharistic Lord as he truly deserves because this may very well be our last Mass.
Please stand. <coughs> On this blessed night, when our Lord commands us to remember in a special way the ineffable graces of the Eucharistic sacrifice, we offer up our prayers. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Oscar, all the bishops and clergy, and all the faithful, that we will deepen our dedication to serve one another through the gesture of the washing of the feet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That on this night, in which the Lord establishes the priesthood, all priests will recommit themselves to living radical holiness with renewed zeal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That the power of the Holy Eucharist, wherein Christ is truly present, will penetrate the hearts of all men and women, making him the source and summit of their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer that in his mercy, Christ will grant peace to the world and conversion of sinners by the triumph of his holy cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who suffer will find consolation, blessing, and strength in their conformity to Christ crucified. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, the sacrifice of your Son reveals the greatness of God's love and the path to eternal life. Transform us into your image, that we may become holy and pleasing in your sight. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
Number 190 in the back of the Pima song. Lord, who at thy first Eucharist, 190. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us 
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his, mo as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Oscar, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Lino Cletus, Clement Sixtus, Cornelius Cyprian, Lawrence Crisogono, John and Paul, Cosmes and Demians, and all you saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we might be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ 
handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, 
who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the seat of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Bless also your servants who do sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, to sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
the pew missile number 75, Adoro Te Devote, 75 in the back of the pew missile. <coughs>
In the back of the Pima Soul, number 208, O oh, Jesus, we adore thee, 208. and trust ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary.
us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 